150,000 Palestinians forced to flee by an invading occupying force, the Israeli government, a terrorist government that is murdering scores and scores of people. This is not a war of self-defense, as the Israeli government are the occupiers and have no right to self-defense. Well, let's stay with the Middle East because the United Nations says more than 150,000 people have fled Khan Yunus in southern Gaza since Monday. The Israeli army issued an evacuation order for parts of the city and reduced the size of Al Mawazi. That's a designated humanitarian zone, claiming it was being used by Hamas fighters. The UN agency for Palestine. They're attacking an area that is meant for safety because freedom fighters are attacking against an invading force. Logic is that. Palestinian refugees, UNRWA, said 80% of the Gaza Strip was now either under an evacuation order or labelled a no-go zone. Our special correspondent, Fergal Keane, has this report a warning. There are distress distressing images throughout. So many escaping in such a small place, chased by the war in the heat and fear of 24 hours in Khan Yunus. This isn't, this isn't a war, it's a genocide by an, an invading force, an occupying nation. This is a genocide. <laughs> A place of encounters such as these, Ayman al Khawaji is running with a child. Not for a doctor. The child is past that. But to a mortuary. Who can I. Man, imagine being invaded by another nation. And when you fight back, you're considered the terrorist for it. Doesn't make any sense. Except that their son will be like that, he asks. Whose fault is it that their family is blown up? The Israeli government in the United States. The United States is arming and funding the Israeli government to do their genocide. The IDF is back fighting in Khan Yunus because Hamas is resurgent here urban war where nowhere is safe. To the south in Rafah, Hamas attacking Israeli armor. Hit and run from inside houses. Guerrilla warfare is the best uh, strategy you can do when you're fighting against a group with overwhelming force. Uh, hit and run tactics. Uh, shoot them some shoot them and then run somewhere else, shoot them again, run to a different location. I mean, how else are they going to fight against an army that has tanks and jet fighters and being continually funded and armed by one of the strongest military nations in the world? The days of war are now in their hundreds, and each day in Khan Yunus, a breaking point for someone. The shattered hospital system is struggling with new wounded. Before the war, Sami Sulia, aged four, and his sister Sila, who's seven. Here they are now in Nasser Hospital. Sila's legs are paralyzed. Sami has severe abdominal injuries. And does do people think that these kids are going, going to grow up, you know, liking the Israeli government? They're injured because of Israeli government. And if they grow up to want to fight against them, that's their right. The situation has been very difficult for me, with one child in intensive care and the other outside. I asked an ally of Israel's Prime Minister to respond to international concern about the plight of wounded children in Gaza. Priority for me, priority for me, in parallel to humanitarian aid that I allow, is to bring back my hostages, including a baby. The Jewish Bibas. The Israeli government doesn't care about the hostages. If they actually did, they would have agreed to a ceasefire 
long, long ago to get hostages free. Even the Israeli citizens, the people protesting and fighting against the Israeli government to have the hostage, hostages free, know that Bibi Netanyahu in the right wing party does not care about the hostages. That's why they know uh, Bibi Netanyahu is no different than Hitler and why they liken their government to Nazi Germany. They know they're just using these people as pawns to commit a genocide in Gaza. This is why the Israeli government continually talks about taking over Gaza and the West Bank and rebuilding it for use of the Israeli government. Children, four-year-old Ariel, one-year-old Kafir, were taken hostage with their parents by Hamas. There are conflict. And what about all the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of, of Palestinians being held hostage by the Israeli government and tortured? You have EF members speaking out about that. You have doctors speaking out about that. You have news um, agencies reporting on that. You get Israeli protesters speaking out against the torture by the Israeli government. Conflicting reports about whether they've survived. You never ask us, I mean, how does Israel feel? How does Israel live with the fact that two of her little boys, we don't even know where they are? It's always about the kids on the other side. So I'll tell you something. If you really care about the kids on the other side, make sure that Israel win the war and, and Hamas does not reign in Gaza. If you care about all the Palestinian kids, the Israeli government is, is murdering. You do something for the Israeli government? Like, that doesn't make any sense. He only cares about the Israeli kids and, you know, the hundreds of thousands of Palestinian kids that are being murdered uh, on the daily by the Israeli government. Oh, just let the Israeli government continue to kill more people so that they can somehow stop Hamas, the people actually trying to defend against the Israeli government and their invasion and theft.